Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India lecture uh, from Chanakya, one of the uh, greatest um, person or educationist I call him in ancient India and he has written a book known as Arthasastra which you must be aware and he says that education is a best friend, an educated person is respected everywhere, education beats the beauty and youth which was a magnanimous statement what he has given. But if I look at modern education, is not really subscribed to that. Therefore, there is a need to look at modern education and see that how it can help us in pursuing our life towards excellence. So, uh, let us uh, look at what we did in the last lecture. We are basically looking at how to carry out a cycle analysis and various notations we have used and we have defined certain terms like temperature ratio, pressure ratio, right, for the various components. And what we'll be doing today, we'll be basically looking at now various assumptions of ideal cycle analysis because to simplify, whatever I will tell you now uh, is basically to simplify the analysis which all of you know because you have under, uh, you have already done the course on thermodynamics and propulsion in your earlier time. So, the, uh, in the particular video, the working fluid has the same compulsion throughout the engine. When I say same compulsion, generally we take is air. If you look at whatever the assumption I will be talking about in thermodynamics known as air standard assumption. That means, you know, this uh, we know that combustors in which you will be adding fuel, it will be converted into various components, various spaces, but however you are not considering, right, just for the simplest sake. And working fluid behaves as a calorifically perfect gas. The perfect gas, you know, uh, of course it will be valid all the time because although the pressure will be high, but temperature is being higher, you can do that. But here you are saying calorifically perfect gas because the properties won't be changing although the temperature will be changing as you go from various components of a gas turbine engine or a ramjet engine. Of course the ramjet engine we will be discussing today. So uh, but uh, that we are assuming for the simplicity and fuel flow rate is negligibly small in comparison to air flow rate because if you look at the ratio air to fuel flow rate is around 30 kind of things of course it can vary from 20 to 40 or even more right but we are neglecting whenever we are comparing we will neglect but in other places we won't be neglecting for example if i am talking about tssc thrust specific fuel consumption or thermal efficiency can i neglect say that okay m, m dot f will be zero i cannot manage to do that right so that way you should understand Comparison, uh, whenever we are comparing, we will have to neglect and isentropic compression in air intake, fan and compression. So, compression process occurs in all these three components. So, we are saying isentropic, but in real situation it won't be. Isentropic means reversible and adiabatic. How can that possible? It is not possible. Of course, one can say that heat, uh, the fluid is flowing through the compressor and air intake very fast maybe heat loss to the ambient will be very low, you can neglect it, but it cannot be reversible, friction will be there, without that you cannot really do much, right, particularly in compression. So therefore, you cannot have, but we are doing for simplicity. And isentropy expansion in turbine and nozzle, right, and uh, constant pressure combustion we are assuming, right, because this is the deflagration and unlike it is not a combustion chamber or the closed volume where combustion taking place. So here the pressure is remaining constant. Uh, one example I always give as if the combustion is occurring in a balloon. 
but if it is a closed surface can i say pressure is remaining constant during combustion it will be increasing like in your ic engine internal combustion engine. is modeled as a constant volume process we have seen that adiabatic temperature under constant volume and constant pressure will be different right so similarly uh, this is again uh, we are making uh, and it is not that bad but however we are also assuming in this the total pressure loss in the, during the combustion is negligibly small right which is not the case no pressure losses in air intake and combustor nozzle right as i told just now not only combustor but air intake and nozzle there is no pressure losses it's not possible in real situation but we are doing we are assuming that but to engine exhaust is expanded fully in the nozzle right that means it is a uh, what to call the thrust is contributed due to the moment and it is of course that is the ideal situation because uh, particularly in rocket engine other thing which we are not considering but there you cannot have here you maybe some regime it will be expanded fully in other regime it won't be. so with this assumption now we will be uh, you know moving into ramjet engine keep in mind these assumptions will be valid for ramjet and then uh, turbo fan engine turbo jet engine turbo prop engine what we will be discussing under ideal cycle and what we are doing we are basically looking at parametric cycle analysis that means we will be varying those parameters and see how it is affecting the various performance parameter that is the objective of this cycle analysis unlike your other analysis what you want that it can be used as a design tool so let us look at ramjet engine if you look at a ramjet engine i have shown a schematic diagram this is having portion is air intake in this case the what to call air will be entering and from the supersonic speed because ramjet engine operates under the supersonic speed kind of thing and it will be entering and then decelerated that means compression of air will be taking place and then it will be burned in the combustors of course flame holder will be there and once this high temperature high pressure gas being produced it will be expanded in a nozzle which is nothing but a cd nozzle conversion diversion nozzle right let us look at actual cut away view of a ramjet why the name ramjet is there because in this case the ram pressure is being utilized for example when the what you call air is coming at a supersonic speed and it will be having a supersonic spike and it will act as a diffuser and the uh, what you call this known as supersonic compression and it till that means the uh, air will be decelerated <coughs> from supersonic speed to the sonic in the uh, what you call in the intake supersonic intake and then from sonic to the subsonic you know it will be taking place beside this you need to have you know fuel because the fuel has to be burned right and if for that you need have a pump and then inlet will be there it is injectors or the atomizers you know there will be fuel manifold here fuel will be being stored generally you know like in uh, your boeing aircraft other thing where fuel is being stored it is stored in the wing right kind of thing so therefore in the fuel injections that atomizers it will be there and then it will be mixed with incoming air and it should be good and then when you burn the flame has to be you know stabilized with the help of flame holders very simple stabilizing mechanism is being used and when this hot gas is uh, being produced at a high pressure it is uh, what to call expanded in nozzle if you look at this is the conversion diversion which is very very small you know in this case this one but then what about this thing because there the mixing and combustion will be taking place it will be uniform so that you know and combustion will be complete because it is at a little higher speed and keep in mind that here the subsonic combustion happens not supersonic combustion okay so now if you look at it is a quite a simpler system as compared to the gas turbine right why because it is not having compression if compression is not there that means 
it will be not having any turbine. So, and there is no sap as such, and then the complexity is being, it is a very, very simple thing. Let us look at a, a schematic of a ramjet which we will be using, and keep in mind that 0 we are saying is the station number, and 0 to 1 is your supersonic compression, and basically it is super, uh, the air has to decelerate from supersonic speed to the sonic condition and then from 1 to 2 is a subsonic compression generally people design for to achieve 0 0.3 Mach number Mach number of 0 0.3 at the station 2 at the ex end of the or exit of the air intake right and the total 0 to 2 is nothing but your air intake like com combined with the combination of both supersonic and subsonic and then the of course there is no compression although we are keeping the same station number this is a three two or three is almost same you can say although it is not shown in this field and then uh, three to four is your combustion where the fuel will be sprayed and mixed and then you know stabilized with the help of flame holders which are basically gutters is being used by the flame stabilizer and expanded in nozzle that is 4 to 9, right. So why we do not need a compression here because of fact that the air will be entering at a very high speed. For example, if it is entering Mach number um, around 2.5, right, greater than equal to 2.5, right, or you can say it is equal to 2.5 and we will have to now compress it or decelerated it you know because we are compressing by decelerating the flow at the end of the air intake to 0.3 if you do a simple calculation of isentropic flow you will find the pressure ratio of something around 17 18 you can get so then if i am getting a pressure ratio of 18 or 17 you know it is good enough i need not to really go for a compression which is a very bulky and costly affair so also the turbine I can help. But problem with this kind of thing is that it cannot start from the very beginning, right? Unless it achieve certain flight velocities, particularly supersonic kind of thing, the compression will be very, very low, right? Or it won't be zero. It will be zero at the static condition. So from the ground, it cannot be really, uh, you know, fly. So that is the limitation of this. So if you look at, there is a, a, another important aspect that you can have, you know, add more amount of fuel so that it can go to the temperature of 2000 Kelvin because there is no rotary elements in it. So there is no material problem, although uh, material problem about the combustor liner will be there, but that is being stationary. So you can manage to cool it, design properly because with the uh, nowadays good exotic materials have come up, you can go a little more beyond the 2000 Kelvin. But earlier days, it was people are restricting to 1400, 1500 Kelvin kind of thing, even in the ramjet because of it. But when uh, the designer, uh, you know, they have used their mind and come up with ideas how to, you know, develop, uh, how to operate the ramjet engine with the even, uh, what you call, existing material. So that is the uh, what you call innovativeness of the design. So therefore we always uh, work with constraint and whenever we work with constraint we get a lot of ideas. So whichever whenever you face problem you will have to see that I will have to do something so that I will use my mind so that I will get the problem to be solved. Right. So that is very important. And it is the simplest of air breathing engine because it is devoid of gas turbines and rotating elements like turbines and compressors. Of course, as I told, the pressure ratio is limited by the flight Mach number and performance of air intake that we will see as you go along. It cannot develop the static thrust itself. <laughs> but question is, if it cannot develop, right, I cannot really use this unless otherwise I am having a, another aid to do that. For example, I can take, uh, you know, carry a missile of, uh, you know, based on the ramjet principle. 
with a rocket or in an aircraft, you know, supersonic aircraft, fighter aircraft, then I launch. But if I want to, no, no, I am not happy with that, I want to use a ramjet from the ground itself, what I'll have to do? What are the ideas? Can anybody tell me? Pulse jet. Huh? Pulse jet. Pulse jet itself I can use, why should I use ramjet? Right? Rocket. Rocket is already being used, so also aircraft, but I want to do something. So what I'll have to do? Huh? So what I'm thinking, I'll leave this question to you, right? And think about it. If you come up some ideas without looking at the uh, existing one, then you know it will be interesting to discuss. Okay. Otherwise, some ideas I can give. I don't want to give at this moment. Later on, we'll see. So let us look at uh, how what are the processes that are involved. As you told that zero to two is basically the compression. In a TS diagram, I can write down 0 to 2, that is the compression, right? Isentropic process, isentropic compression. But if I look at, in a PV diagram, how it will be? Compression process 0 to 2, T2, it will be T2, right? And then TT2 from this station to what you call 4, it is the compression, that is constant pressure com combustion, right? This is compression, right? So if I look at in PV diagram, it will be very simple, that is a constant pressure, pressure is not remaining constant. And PT4 to P9, it will be expansion. Expansion where? Expansion in a nozzle, that is isentropic expansion. So my, it will be TT4 and this station is basically 9. So. And I'm just saying it is uh, basically four station you can say because total we are talking about totally keep in mind whenever I am talking about ratio in combustion chamber what I will be saying it will be pi V will be PT4 by PT2 right total I am considering if I say it is tau V it will be similar PT4 by PT2 right but whereas when I am coming over here, it is the static condition. At the exit of the nozzle, at the inlet, it is also static condition. Keep this in mind, very important point. Right? So we will be using those things and see that whether we can, you know, use, uh, how we can use this thing for our analysis. Is that clear? Any doubt in this? Because it is a very important thing and we will be using similar stuff you know, processes describing in the process diagram like TS, PV, I can have HS, I can have some other thing as well, right? I can have TV, right? So you should think about this, how I can, you know, describe the processes in various ways because that will help you to uh, enrich your mind. So the thrust equation for ramjet engine is basically uh, is uh, thrust is equal to m dot 9 v 9 minus m dot m dot naught v naught plus a 9 p 9 minus p naught and keep in mind that what we are assuming in ideal cycle it is a fully expanded nozzle so therefore p 9 is equal to p 9 is equal to p naught so therefore it is thrust is equal to m naught v 9 minus m naught v naught only contributed from the momentum. What we are trying to do? We are trying to now express these equations in terms of various ratios so that we can vary and see what we are doing. That is you should keep in mind. It is involves a lot of algebra. So and as I told it is P9 P0 and then M09 is equal to M0. Right, that we are assuming. That means whatever the mass is exiting, it is 
whatever the equal to mass is entering. That means we are neglecting the mass of fuel being added, which is not a uh, you know right thing. But we are doing for simplicity, right? What I am saying, maybe I can write down here, m not 9 is equal to m not not plus m dot f. This we are saying, it is small as compared to m not. That's why it is neglected, right? So is equal to m not. Approximate, it's not true. So what I'll do, I can write down this expression. I'll take this m not 9 and a naught then i am getting v9 by a naught right what i will do i will basically uh, find out this a naught a naught right a naught here so this is nothing but your m naught right <laughs> and what we will do if you look at m a naught is the speed of sound right isn't it this is the speed of Sound. Sound where? Ambient. Ambient or the free stream. Right? Free stream. And M0 is the free stream Mach number. Free stream Mach number. And this A0 is nothing but root over gamma R T0. Right? And you can, uh, in uh, some place, uh, you can see this is gamma naught basically corresponding to the, your, this, <coughs> which you will be using not in ideal cycle, but in the real cycle. So, I can write down V9 by A naught whole square is equal to, by definition, A9 square, M9 square divided by A naught square. And this A9 <laughs> square is nothing but gamma 9, R9, T9. And we are assuming this gamma 9 equal to the gamma naught and R9 is same as that R naught. So what we will be getting is, right, is basically T9 by T naught M9 square. That is, right, so if you look at, I am getting here V9 by A naught whole square is equal to T9 by T naught M9 square. I will be writing the same thing in the in the next slide. So, is that clear? So, and equation 3 becomes V9 by A0 whole square equals T9 by T0 M9 square. So, if you look at M9 square, I can express for isentropic process, right, for the, because the expansion is taking place in the nozzle. Can I not write down what will be the M9 in terms of pressure ratio? just using isentropic relationship, right? So, I can write down that M9 square is nothing but 2 divided by gamma minus 1, Pt9 by P9 power to the gamma minus 1 divided by gamma minus 1. This is from the isentropic relationship for the Pt9 by P9, P9 right? Nothing, I have just rewritten, right? So, what we will do now, we will have to basically look at this Pt9 by P9, how it is, you know, how we can express in terms of various pressure ratios. So, Pt9 by 9 can be expressed in terms of pressure ratio across each component. What I will do, I can write down Pt9 by P9 is equal to Pt9 by Pt4 into Pt4 by Pt2 into Pt2 by Pt0 into Pt2 by P0 into P0 by P0 and this is equal to 1. Why? Because P9 is equal to P0. Fully expanded work what you have done. Yeah. So if you look at what is this one? This is nothing but your pi n. The pressure ratio in the nozzle. Total pressure ratio in the nozzle. And this is nothing but your pi v, Pt4 by 2. This is the combustors, right? And this is nothing but your pi d. And this is nothing but your pi r. <laughs> Keep in mind that this is Pt naught by P naught. That means total, right, to the static. That's why we are saying it is pi r. 
by definition of course you know because i have defined that thing you know next to it okay <laughs> so now what we will do now we are saying this pressure that means the mach number exit mach number will be dependent on this pressure ratios you are getting one but now it is you know too many right yes or no and the same thing we will be doing for turbo z turbo fan turbo prop also right because we are now looking at each component how they will be affecting the exit velocity as exit velocity will be affecting the thrust right for a particular of course the flight mat so let us and if you look at what is this uh, pi n by the uh, by your assumption pi n will be one or not total pressure ratio across the nozzle is is one because there is no loss so pi n will be one and what about uh, this uh, pi b that is also one burner pi d isentropic uh, compression so therefore it will be one can i say pi r is equal to one can i say i cannot because mach number you know it is not total it is basically except all these thing pressure ratio this was the pressure ratio which is with respect to static so this is nothing but your what you call uh, 1 minus gamma minus 1 divided by 2 pt by p9 right no sorry uh, m9 square right that one so <laughs> that is the assumption we have made you look at your assumption we have look at the total pressure ratio across the combustor will be zero total pressure loss if total pressure loss is zero then pt9 divided by pt2 will be one no pressure losses right but however real situation it won't ideal situation it is yes so what we will do we are getting pi n pi b pi d is equal to 1 so pt 9 by p 9 is equal to pi r right and now expression of m 9 can be expressed as you know m 9 is equal to divided by gamma minus 1 pt 9 by p 9 gamma minus 1 gamma minus 1 so what will say this is nothing but your pi r if you look at pi r power to the gamma minus 1 is nothing but your tau r yes or no because i can relate this isentropic temperature ratio to pressure ratio isentropic pressure ratio right we we know those expression so therefore but whereas the pi r gamma tower is nothing but 1 plus gamma minus 1 divided by 2 m naught square if i'll substitute over here what i'll get i'll get gamma minus 1 to m naught square minus 1 so this will cancel it out right and multiply by 2 gamma minus 1 right so what i will get i will get this also will be cancelling out so 2 to cancel it out is equal to m naught square what is saying is saying it's a very interesting statement is saying the exit mach number for an ideal ramjet engine is equal to the flight Mach number. That means what really is happening? That means whatever the velocity of air which will be entering into the ramjet will be same as the exit velocity of the engine? Certainly no. It is the Mach number which is same. Under ideal condition, real situation it won't be. Right? So that is the interesting part how is here but you should not assume that exit a uh, nozzle exit velocity v9 is equal to the uh, v0 or the flight velocity certainly no okay so now we we'll look at how we can you know look at this t9 by t0 and so t9 by t0 temperature ratio i can write down as t t9 divided by t0 divided by tt9 by t0 can i not write like this 
absolutely no problem because it's just you rewriting that. Now we'll be looking at how we can say this TT9 by T0 and keep in mind this TT9 by T9 be related to what? Pressure ratio, temperature ratio, all those things can be related, right? And we'll now look at T9 by T0 in terms of temperature ratio. I can write down TT0 TT9 by T0 is equal to TT9 divided by TT4 into TT4 by TT2 into TT2 by TT0 TT0 by T0 right so if you look at this is uh, temperature ratio what is happening right this is nothing but your this portion is nothing but your tau n this is nothing but your tau b this is nothing but your TT2 by T0 tau r uh, tau d and this is of course the tau r right but if I look at this, can I say that tau n is equal to 1? Total, because we are not adding any heat, nor you are taking any heat out of it. Adiabatic condition, isentropic expansion, right? So therefore, I can say this is 1. Can I say that tau b is equal to 1? Right, mm -hmm. no? can I say? No. I cannot, I am adding heat, right? So therefore, the total temperature ratio across the burner or the combustor cannot be 1. What about tau d? I can say it is constant. 1, not constant, 1. No. Ratio is 1. Right. And so therefore, I will, and tau r, can I say it is equal to 1? Certainly no. Right. Because it is the flight uh, dependent on the flight Mach number. Right. Okay. It can never be 1. It will be more than 1. Always. Unless otherwise, flight mag number is 0. There it will be 1, right? So, <coughs> therefore, I can say that T9 by T0 is nothing but tau b dot tau. That means multiplication, basically. In this case, I have used. So, T9 by T0 is nothing but TT9 divided by T0, right? And TT9 by T9 if you look at that is equal to tau r we have already seen that earlier so it will cancel it out you will get tau b that means t9 by t0 is nothing but tau b and of course this i have already told you earlier that how it is tt9 by t9 is nothing but your pi r gamma minus 1 there is nothing but your tau <laughs> right we have already derived this thing, so we need not to repeat it. So now we will have to look at the combustors and keep in mind that we are assuming the in the, this combustion chamber the flow to be one dimensional, but in real situation it cannot never be, okay. And we are assuming that certain amount of air is entering and, and fuel being added and it is going out with certain mass flow rate of air and fuel. So, we can carry, uh, you know, like uh, considering the flow to be one dimensional and steady flow that always we are assuming in this in analysis, which I think I didn't mention, that is a steady flow, okay. And even in real cycle, we will be assuming the flow to be steady, that you keep in mind. So, therefore, it will be m dot 2 s t t 3 minus m dot f delta s t is equal to m dot 4 s t 4. And what we are assuming here that continuity equation, you know, that m dot 4 is equal to m dot f plus into m dot 3 and we are saying m dot f in this equation particularly less than m dot, uh, very very small. So therefore we are saying that is m dot 4 is equal to m dot 3 is equal to m dot air, how much air is entered. And we are assuming calorie perfect gas, so therefore Cp3 is equal to Cp4 and Cp, right. So, if I look at this, if I can write down this expression, I can write down m dot equation 9, I am writing Cp T3 plus m dot F delta Sc, that is the heat of combustion, m dot A and Cp T4, right. If I uh, could uh, write this expression, further simplify, what I will get, 
I will get m dot f delta S C is nothing but m dot a C P T T T two because T three is equal to T T two, right? So in this place I can write down, you know, T T three T T two. So I can take this out m dot a C P T T two and T T four by divided by T two minus one. So what I can write down here basically, uh, m dot f delta s c is equal to m dot a c p, right? And uh, t t two minus t t four, and I from that I can get this. Like if I take t t four out, no no sorry, uh, there is some problem. Okay. T T four minus T T two. Okay, so if we take this out, you will get T T four by T T. So uh, let us define f is equal to m dot f by a, and then from that expression, I will get m dot f divided by m dot a is equal to C P T T two divided by delta S C is T T four divided by T T two, and this is nothing but your tau. B by definition, right? Because we are assuming T T two is equal to T T. There is no, you know, compression here, so therefore we are using. And keep in mind that this T T two will be same as T T naught, right? Because the T T naught is equal to T T two, and no heat being added as shown in the uh, what we call T S diagram. So therefore, I can write down T T naught is equal to T T naught divided by T naught. And this, uh, by definition, is nothing but tau r, so t naught by tau. R. Then we can write down as f is equal to m dot f by m dot a is equal to c p t naught tau r delta s c tau b minus one. So uh, now we shall write down basically the one definition which we will be using. I didn't define. Let me define that. Is a tau lambda. This is a total enthalpy at the burner exit. That is, uh, you can say it is a. Uh, oh, there is a little mistake here. So four and t four, and this is not required. So t t four by t t two and t two by this. So it will be tau b into tau r. Right. The total. Enthalpy at the burner exit, right, will be CP4 TT4 divided by this thing, CP0 by T0. So that I can say that CP CP this will cancel it out. So therefore TT4 by TT2 is equal to TT2 by T0 equal to tau b by tau r. That means what you are saying tau lambda is basically tau b tau r, right. And this will be using, you know, some places. So coming to that, like I can write down, you know, this f is equal to m dot f c p t naught delta s c tau b tau r. I can write down tau lambda, right, and minus tau r. So v nine by a naught square. If you look at what we have done, we have find out t nine by t naught m nine square, and this is. Nothing but your tau b, and m nine is nothing but your m naught square. So that became tau b m naught whole square. So then our expression for the thrust, if you look at, it will be in this place. What we'll be using is basically root over tau b m naught. So if I take this m naught out, it will be m naught a naught square m naught root over Tau b minus one. This is a very very simple expression. What it says to you? It says the thrust will be dependent on the amount of mass flow rate entering into the engine. It will be dependent on also the flight Mach number, and it will be also dependent on tau b. That means how much energy you are being added. Tau b will be representing temperature ratio across the burner, which will be dictated by 
how much you know uh, fuel you are being burned so that total temperature will increase right so this is the uh, simple expression we are getting and we will be varying these parameters and see how it is you know dependent on what and what are the conclusions so that's why we call it as a parametric segment rewriting equation to get a specific you know get a specific thrust because if i just divided by m dot a here m dot a okay m dot a or m naught so then i will get specific thrust a naught into v9 by a naught minus m naught so that you can write down a naught m naught root over tau v minus v. basically the same thing only this is the specific thrust right and that is the thrust so now what we will do we will look at tsfc just to, uh, you know put these values f and then specific thrust you will get there are several terms are coming into pictures and uh, of course it is a function of similar stuff except the delta <laughs> sc has come into pictures right and propulsive efficiency will be you know you can express in terms of tau v right in place of tau v you can talk about tau lambda by tau r because tau v is related to tau lambda or tau lambda is related to tau v and tau r. we know that tau lambda is equal to tau v tau r and uh, if you look at thermal efficiency it will be similar you can note that the thermal efficiency is equal to 1 minus tau r that means it is dependent on the only on the flight mach number it is not dependent on tau v and other thing like how much heat being added is not really this thing that is a very interesting result right and overall efficiency of course is a multiplication of that which is dependent both on the tau r and tau v because tau lambda when i am saying this expression it is basically tau v right because tau lambda is tau v by tau r tau, uh, tau lambda is equal to tau v by tau r so it will be you know coming pictures so what is say we are armed with all these uh, you know expressions right what we will have to do we will have to uh, vary these parameters and which will be governed by in you know, altitude right it will be governed by flight mac number it will be governed by the temperature you know uh, at the exit of the component <coughs> right so we will be doing that uh, maybe in the next class right because uh, you may be having class after. okay fine